Let's go on to Tesla. We'll talk. We'll, that's just my thoughts on that. But we'll go on to the, the, the big thing. Tesla's come up almost a dollar since we started talking. All right. Let's keep it going. So Tesla, <laughs> right? Tesla, China price change. That's the big, uh, big news, I think, of the week, right? I mean, w w is there anything bigger than the Tesla China price drop uh, that you can think of? I think that's the biggest thing we should No, about, that, right? that's definitely the big thing. I mean, that was like the huge concern was demand in China. I think that's that's what like triggered the whole rundown or, you know, collapse in Tesla in Q4 was, you know, just the, the China demand was really slumping. So um, we were expecting a price increase. We didn't know when. I was kind of surprised that it didn't happen like right away on January 1st. Um, but then, you know, sure enough, it came. Oh, were you surprised at the magnitude, Emmett? You know, roughly what was yeah. it between five and ten thousand dollars, roughly between depending on which model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised at the magnitude until people showed like the chart of how the price increases. It's basically yeah. just going against what the price increases were for the last like six or nine months or a year or whatever, and just going slightly below the lowest price it was in the past, you know, and that makes sense if if inflation has come back down and they've gotten efficiencies and scaling with rights law going, that makes sense to me that they can keep margins stable at this new capacity with, you know, efficiencies and no more inflation and, and such. I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, like they they need they needed to to do something pretty drastic. Um, the surprising thing I thought was like the mixed reports that we were getting out of China. One was like that there would be like the same picture of like a crowded store, and it's on the one hand the bulls are saying like, oh, like look at all these customers flocking to the stores to buy Teslas. Like, like yeah. the website is down because yeah. there's so much demand. And then like the like the Taylor Ogans of the world are like posting the same thing and saying, oh, look at all these unhappy customers like protesting tesla because yeah. they of yeah. the price increase and yeah. it's like it's so hard to get like trustworthy yeah. data on what's actually going on uh yeah. on the ground there I, I, yeah. I think the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle a little bit yeah I and mean, we talked to our source uh we touched base with him on the ground the guy we interviewed about tom zoo and uh i trust him he seems very um honest and and uh, fair, uh, minded when it comes to Tesla and, and, and knows the space well in China. And he said 99% of those reports that people complained are untrue. And that it's like a lot of, uh, clickbaity stuff that like, you know, sure. Five or six people gathered together the day after at a few showrooms, but it was all peaceful protests and no fights or anything and no violence. And, and, and as soon as, you know, as soon as they brought up their points, they were dismissed with the same explanation that kind of Grace um, gave in her interview about, you know, margins coming down and they went away. And sure, there's going to be some social media people that want to make a spectacle of it. Right. And they know it'll get clicks and yeah. go crazy over a Weibo or whatever. Just like the, the lady who stamped on the roof about the brake failure. Remember, that was like the first yeah. thing. So that formula works. It got her a ton of followers and influence, I'm sure. And she was like very popular all over Weibo and social media for a while. And now other people are trying to use that same formula to like create a spectacle of some sort and have this video or picture go viral where they get a whole bunch of social media influence suddenly and they become an influencer of some sort. So I suspect there's a lot of that going on in China, maybe more so than we even can we even see going on. I mean, that goes on here in the U.S. too, but maybe I feel like that goes on more in China now than, than we even suspect that type of kind of uh, desire for it, fame. It, yeah, it, it does seem like that sort of thing gets more viral attention than it does in the U.S. Like, you know, if, if I went and like stomped on the hood of a Rivian and said like, oh, it almost killed my family. Like people would not like they'd be like, oh, what's wrong with that guy? Yeah, you know, it wouldn't it, go viral. It seems like like it definitely would not. Although you had like, that and, one and video. Mostly... Remember you had that one video of trying to open your door and that went viral. Remember? Yeah. Who's, who would have yeah, thought that would have? So... That probably got you 10,000 followers. Who knows? It, it was yeah that was crazy that was like by far it, it had something like 25 million impressions just oh my like my, my door handle was stuck yeah um and apparently all you need to do is just like like bash it with your fist but i just didn't know that yeah. and that works fine so yeah. like it was such not a big deal but like the tesla q community just like ran with it and just like oh like you can't use a tesla in cold weather because the yeah. doors will freeze and there's something about so, like, yeah actual it, video like versus someone talking there's something about actual video footage even if it's like a like a 10 second like look at tiktok right how quickly it's gone up like oh. there's something about those 10 second clips of like a person actually experiencing something and you can feel like them and put yourself in their position and 
it goes viral versus like someone saying a few words, you know, it's just, it's, yeah, uh, it, it, TikTok's like the reverse opium wars. It's like this Chinese import into America that's making us all more stupid and less efficient and yeah. like less able to think critically. It's it's just oh, it's 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 horrible. Yeah. And like I've I've tried around like looking at YouTube Shorts, which is obviously like pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And that's it's so addictive. It's it like it's awful. There's, we really need as a society, I think, to find ways to like not let our kids and or ourselves even just like get stuck on that stuff because it's it's ridiculously addictive yeah absolutely so i mean what else with, anyway uh, we, we, we've gone all over the place here. <laughs> if we had yeah, an outline what we, we, tesla? yeah what else do we have on tesla for today i'm looking at my outline uh so there was the the u.s inventory levels that was one thing that was a little bit surprising um you know if you do the the tracking of the yeah. inventory new inventory available for sale um, when Tesla had that that uh, price cut at the end of the year, at the end of 2022, the new inventory level just plummeted like down close to zero. Um, then after the new year, we were kind of expecting um, that sort of trend to continue because the IRA credits would be in effect. But with the uncertainty around which models qualify, and, and you know, yeah. there's been reports that the Tesla, you know, um, they're employees, not employees, but like employees like won't even talk about the IRA. So they're not going to say if you qualify or not. So I think there's this um, this thing which should be a catalyst and I think will be eventually, but um, it is apparently not uh, being a catalyst for the moment because the consumers are just so uncertain um, about whether they'd even qualify for them and it's not being pushed by Tesla. Um, yeah. So the inventory levels have, have really spiked quite high in, in the first couple of, of days of, of January. So uh, that's something definitely to keep a close eye on, because if that yeah. trend continues, then um, I think we should expect a price cut in the U.S. Um, or some other sort of, you know, kind of promotion <laughs> to um, yeah. to clear that inventory. Yeah, I'd be curious. Is there any way to check like inventory letters of inventory levels of all the other um EVs that are not Teslas. I mean, I, I know they're like held at dealerships is different because if there is inventory levels building up of the other EVs that presumably are available, you know, for the the tax credit right now, um, but there is a buildup instead of those being sold off, then you might presume that people are just holding off in, on their EV purchase altogether, whether to whether it's going to be a Tesla or something else until they figure out until they get clarity on whether the Model Y or Model 3, you know, um, uh, you know, gets the deduction. I don't know. I, I feel like people are pretty smart when they're spending a lot of money, like a car purchase. They're not going to just, you know, some people will just you know, buy it like, uh, any, you know, without thinking too hard about it maybe. But I think a lot of people are very, uh, um, careful about a, such a large purchase and they want to say, you know, just like in China with the price cut, people are sensitive to that. People in the U S are very sensitive too. I think a lot of people want to get the, the best deal and don't want to miss out on like a huge $7,500, you know, tax deduction by just not waiting a week or two to just to figure out if that really qualifies or not. And if it doesn't, maybe they actually would go to like a Chevy bolt or whatever instead, you know, but they're waiting. I think, you know, that's my suspicion. There's a, a, a large group of, you know, savvy, smart buyers kind of just w waiting. That's my thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, th that makes sense. I mean, it's, um, I, I think it's, it's pretty clear that, you know, the, the economy is softening. And, uh, I, I was not thinking that the U S would have to have a price credit because of the IRA, but given the, you know, as, as far as that has said, like the IRS essentially just screwed, uh, um, Tesla with, with the, qualification of the model y um you know that i think that would that came as a surprise and so we, we may need to if that doesn't change soon then i think we probably are going to need to see a, a price cut here yeah. in the states yeah yeah and as far as i sent us an interesting uh metric and infographic you know sort of about um new vehicle day supply by major brands as of the end of november 2022 and from a like a big picture historical perspective you know, this sort of makes sense. Uh, at some point, Tesla would be in the line down the middle, the healthy supply line at some point, maybe in the future. Uh, and I'll just retweet this right now um, so people can see what, what far as I had. I, I've seen this before, too. Um, but it's a good infographic to keep in the back of your mind for, you know, down the road at some point, Tesla should be in that like middle line, closer to that middle line. And, and, and you could say maybe they're getting closer to it now. But 
it just doesn't sit right with me at the moment with uh, such a sudden increase in inventory, you know, coincidentally with, you know, the end of the year, that $7,500 deal getting, you know, com coming off the by Tesla coming, com coming off. So, you know, it, it just feels like there's certainly a bubbling up of supply. Uh, pe people lack not wanting to, to purchase their car yet. It seems like uh, the last two week or since January 1st, you know, so yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get clarity from the IRS on those IRA guidelines very soon so that, you know, we can see what happens yeah. with Tesla. And as, as Tesla investors, I think it, it's easy to forget <laughs> that like auto sales are, you know, seasonal on, on top of being cyclical. So, mm -hmm. you know, Q1 is historically the weakest, um, you know, quarter for, for car sales just in general. Um, you know, people don't like to go out in the cold. They've just spent a lot of money on, you know, the holidays and Christmas. And so, uh, for whatever reason, you know, Q1 is just generally a weak quarter anyways. And I think, was it back in 2020, I, I want to say, you know, there was there was weak um, sales in, in Q1 and like they had to, Tesla had to cut prices. And so a lot of maybe newer Tesla investors are kind of surprised that Tesla would ever cut prices or that like there is any seasonality in, in auto. But like this is this is really not new. I mean, the, the last two years, like we were talking about, were extreme in the economy for a variety of reasons. And so... You know, Tesla had to raise prices just because the backlog got so extreme. Yeah. Uh, but now we're yeah. kind of in a more normal situation. I think Tesla is obviously going to continue to to gain market share, uh, but that doesn't mean that they've got unlimited demand the way that they seem to, you know, 12 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I see uh, DRK in the YouTube comments saying we're not going to get clarity from the IRS until March. Um, you know, on their decision for I, you know, any IRA adjustment clarity or guidelines, I guess. So if that's true, you know, we're in for, uh, uh, you know, six or eight weeks of uncertainty here, I think with Tesla supply demand imbalance in the U S you know, I, I'm not saying there is a supply. I think there's going to be uncertainty around what the imbalance really is and how it'll get cleared up, uh, as, as that clarity from the IRS comes about. Cause I would imagine if Tesla is going to put another, you know, $5,000 price break on all the Teslas, you know, if they're weighing whether or not to do that, they also want to wait until they get clarity from the IRS on this, you know, before they decide to put that into effect, right? So I would imagine if Tesla was going to do something like that, that wouldn't be until March if that's when we're waiting until to get um, clarity from the IRS. Yeah, I mean, and they could do some stuff in the meantime. I mean, I've seen some people speculate on making the seven seat Model Y like the standard, um, so like, maybe you could do that. Like there's, <laughs> there's even this crazy idea, which maybe isn't so crazy of like adding a 300 pound, like lead weight to all vehicles, <laughs> like to qualify for the credit, which is just yeah. ridiculous. And then have like, enable it to be removed for free at the time of delivery or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Tesla would be, you know, quite <clears throat> that direct in terms of, um, like gaming the system, but I think there are things they could do to like tweak pricing to, to get consumers to opt for these, um, you know, vehicles that do qualify, but, um, yeah, it's, it kind of remains to be seen. And, and the fact that the, even ones that, which very do clearly qualify for the IRA today, like the, the, for everything I've heard is that like the sales associates at Tesla are not like saying, yes, like if you want to qualify for the IRA, here's the, here's the one you should buy. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's an opportunity. Like clearly it's going to lead to inventory building up and, and maybe some pricing pressure in the, in the near term, but like eventually it's going to be clear like which ones qualify and which ones don't and like tesla is going to be trained to like push those and so uh we we certainly do have some uncertainty right now but like whenever the clarity does come and tesla starts like pushing that demand lever uh I, like <laughs> to me that's just the opportunity so yeah. uncertainty is not fun but uh it's only upside from here i think in, in terms of, of that particular demand issue yeah Absolutely. Now, the other t piece of Tesla news we were going to cover, real, I think, is the Cybertruck Gigapress getting shipped to Austin. It seems uh, in time to kind of maybe use it for that March 1st investor day because it takes I've, I, I've heard from Rob Mauer's podcast. And I've heard before that it takes like a month or six weeks to kind of unload and get it ready once it's delivered. So that would time well with uh, the March 1st investor day to kind of showcase it a little bit for the cyber truck. I mean, that's exciting. And there's also rumors of a cyber, of a IDRA press similar size being delivered to China. 
um, and everyone speculating that it's going to the Shanghai factory in China. And that would make sense. Maybe they're going to produce the gig of the, the Tesla cyber truck in China for all all of Asian, all of non-US, you know, deliveries or production of the cyber truck because you know, there's going to be tons of demand just inside the U.S. for the one in, in Austin. So that'd be pretty neat to have the Cybertruck built both in China and in, in the U.S. at the same time, sort of. Uh, you have any thoughts on that, Matt? Do you think that's likely or what do you think? Yeah, so I'm I, I'm, I'm skeptical of Cybertruck being produced in Shanghai. Like to, to me, like the, the truck market is like very clearly centered in North America. Um, and so yeah. for them to to be adding that as like a production line, um, when like they haven't even figured out all of the, th this is drastically different than like the model three or the model Y in terms of the, what the production process is going to look like. Like this is the yeah. exoskeleton. It's a structural battery pack, which they've got a little bit of experience with the new model Y. Um, yeah. but like really this is a brand new manufacturing, um, like experiment that they're going to try to work through. So to me, it seems really unlikely that they'd be making the cyber truck or at least like shipping equipment to, for the cyber pr truck production yeah. in Shanghai. So I, yeah, I, I think it could be uh, um, like, I think, what, is it the front castle three is not um, structural yet uh, um, in, in Shanghai, I, I want to say. So to me, yeah. it made more sense that like maybe it's just kind of that continuous improvement um, with the existing lines in, in Shanghai because you can you can strip mm -hmm. costs out if you, if you if you get like the whole like the front and rear castings done uh, for both the three and the Y. Like to me, that seems like the more low hanging fruit than trying to, you know, ramp up cyber truck in two different plants one of which is in an area which frankly does not have a lot of demand for pickup trucks so I, to me it's mm -hmm. I, I was skeptical of that of that being cyber truck related for at least for shanghai yeah yeah i mean i i i kind of i'm hopefully up cautiously optimistic or hopefully <laughs> optimistic that uh that it is uh the tesla giga cyber truck for shanghai i've i've seen um people in China located in China saying there's like huge interest in the cyber truck in China. You know, they don't use their pickup trucks in general is not a huge market in China, but for whatever reason, the cyber truck is such a different unique design that there's like these online forums dedicated to the cyber truck and people that like with hundreds of people on him, like saying, I want the cyber, you know, thousands of people. So it's like sort of, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they're going to build the cyber truck in China as well for Chinese consumers primarily and export it to the rest of the world from there as well. So I'm, I'm, I, I think that'd be pretty neat if that's the case, but it, you know, I'm not putting my, I'm not betting, I'd say 50, 50 odds. That's my odds on it. Okay. I, I'll definitely take the under. <laughs> it, yeah. it does make me, uh, think back. So when I was spending some time in China, this was probably 2007, 2008, you know, it's like, vast majority is like small cars on the road, a lot of bicycles too. But like there was some rich person who had like a full size like GM Hummer on the road and mm -hmm. it just like dwarfed everything. And it was like so clearly like a status symbol and they would just like would park it on like the sidewalk, like wherever they wanted to. And it, it yeah. like, this must be a nightmare to actually drive around these streets, which are not designed for it. So yeah. like, to yeah. me, I could see it being a niche product within China, but maybe not one that's worth, you know, building a dedicated facility there. So yeah, I, I'm at like 10%. To me, it you're, makes a lot more 10%. sense. You're 10%. Oh, okay. I'm at 50, 50. Casting for the model 40, 40, but 50, 50, I'm comfortable with you. You're at 10, 90. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Let's, and the last thing we were going to title our, uh, I, I said we should title the, uh, this, the live stream. It should a cool title, like clickbaity title would be mega pack or mega dud. You know, there's so much talk about the mega pack these days. I mean, it's kind of clickbaity because people are like, what do you, what do you mean the mega, is it a mega dud? You know, because everyone's getting so bullish on this mega pack. It just feels kind of crazy, like bored apes all over again, but for Tesla or something, but there seems to be some truth to it, right? I mean, you really dove into it. Mad Manx has other people we respect. I mean, there's very high margin potential with this mega pack keyword being potential, but uh, what are your, did you have some more info you wanted to talk about with that? Today. No, I mean, no, no specific info so much as just like, you know, I, I have been digging into it a lot. And, you know, I think two, maybe two weeks ago, you and I spent a little bit of time on this stream kind of diving into it and, and really kind of expressing caution. But, um, you know, there has been a fair amount of stuff that as I've dug into it actually has credibility. So um, I, I think it's it's probably reasonable to to assume that like the, the Lathrop ramp, like that's very clear, like that's happening. That's provable. The the uncertainty is definitely around the margins, um, yeah. and so I would certainly, um, you know, 
express caution around like some of the more optimistic, like 60% margins that were, that were being tossed around for a while. Um, certainly yeah. in the short term, like, I think that's like 0% chance of happening, like in Q4, or Q1. Um, so like, you know, I just, I, I really want to both express caution, but say this is also like a real opportunity that w I think will kind of manifest itself over the next, you know, year or two. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, there, there's so much nuance with this and I've heard like, um, so the zero sum game guy, and there's been a couple yeah. others I've listened to some, um, you know, like live streams that they've done and it's, it's, it's very clear or our Twitter spaces that they actually don't have an energy background. So like they're, they've got some really good points, but there's some other stuff that they're just like way off about, or like just clear, they don't mm. really know what they're talking about with respect to this industry. So I don't mean that to denigrate them. It's, it's just super complicated industry. Um, yeah. So I would just express caution to everybody. This is a very, very complicated industry. Like I was a finance like generalist for my whole career, basically up until I joined the energy industry. Like I got very good at quickly analyzing a company in any industry and kind of understanding its prospects. Energy is just like completely different, especially when you, you get into electric utilities. So yeah. um, just I would urge caution, but I also do think that it's it's um, a legitimate opportunity. So we'll probably yeah. have more details to share over time. But yeah. um, and I'm I am talking to to Farzad on this tomorrow, so we'll get into yeah. some more of the specifics than, than we can today on this stream. But um, yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's gonna be a wild ride, I think, because I think the one thing that that zero sum has pointed out, which is legitimate, is that like nobody's giving any credit at all to Tesla yeah. Energy, like in yeah. 2023 or, or beyond. And there definitely is reason that you should give some credit. Um, yeah. So uh, it's uh, it has the potential, I think, to really get analysts to look uh, readjust their their projections and, and come up with some new stuff. So I'm curious to see on this Q4 call in a couple of weeks, like how much they address it, whether the margins actually do increase a little bit. I'm sure the revenues will increase, um, mm -hmm. but there's some reasons that it's going to take longer to roll through their financial statements as well, just due to revenue recognition and stuff. So 